Today is Giving Tuesday, one of the biggest days of the year for nonprofits to gather support for their causes as many Americans get into the holiday spirit of giving. But a troubling new report from the progressive think tank Institute for Policy Studies sheds a new light on the donations the ultra wealthy pledge to charitable causes. It brings us to today's staggering big number, half a trillion dollars. That's how much Americans donated to charity last year. The report explains how the money that many billionaires pledge to give can sit for years tax-free without touching an actual charity. Researchers found that donors often pledge their money to their own private foundations and many haven't made good on their promised donations or have questionable fulfillment methods. And it's not just charities that are hurt. According to the Institute for Policy Studies, the public lost $73 billion in tax revenue in 2022 from personal and corporate charitable deductions. Let's get more on the issue from Chuck Collins, the director of the program on inequality and the common good at the Institute for Policy Studies. Chuck, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me, Chris. Chuck, the report out outlines something we already know, that the rich are getting richer. Just how are they doing so at the expense of charities and taxpayers? Well, what's happening is that um, nonprofit organizations are more and more dependent on wealthy donors. Uh, giving by low and middle income people, as your report has shown, uh, is going steadily down and more and more of the growth in giving is from the ultra wealthy, yet they give differently. They are more likely to give to their own private foundations and donor advised funds. And we found that 41 cents of every dollar given by individuals now goes to these intermediaries controlled by wealthy donors. They get an immediate tax break the year that they give that money, but it can sit warehoused for years, it, it, generations uh, in a private foundation. Um, and so wealthy people give differently. They don't give like most people directly to the soup kitchen or the food bank. They're giving to intermediaries that they control. Yeah, let's uh, dive a little deeper into this. Uh, Chuck, another highlight of the report is how billionaires are blending their charitable giving with for-profit investment. How exactly are they able to make that work? Well, uh, and, and we're seeing these abuses, unfortunately, uh, because the finance, certain segments of the financial industry are marketing charitable foundations and donor advised funds as tax avoidance vehicles. Put your money in here. You can continue to invest it. You continue to uh, uh, move it in different directions, uh, not necessarily to charitable organizations. You can continue to invest in for-profit organizations and ventures. It's sort of like a big shell game, unfortunately, and it's it's distracting and deflecting money away from the charities that urgently need it right now. Yeah, some call it um, obviously, um, you know, just something that you know they're they're taking advantage of the system, so to speak. Um, following up, if someone is giving to their own private foundation, Chuck, how difficult is it to ensure accountability? Well, you know, a private foundation does have some requirements. I mean, the donor is getting a tax reduction, and in exchange for that, we, the public, ask that at least 5% of that money goes out the door every year to a qualified charity uh, and that uh, that be disclosed. Uh, but what's happening is people are then giving to a donor-advised fund that has no payout requirement and that doesn't have to reveal where the money is going. Um, so that's an example of a shell game. Uh, now, I should say, we're a generous people. There's a lot of people who use foundations and donor advised funds to give and move the money in a timely way to a qualified charity, a nonprofit group in their community. That's great. But we're seeing a growing amount of this gaming of the system uh, by ultra high net worth individuals, not ordinary smaller donors, but the ultra wealthy are using it as one more tax dodge in their tax dodge toolbox. <laughs> Chuck, I'm curious, is there anyone in charge in terms of making sure these pledges are filled in a timely manner? And if it's no one, uh, as consumers, how do we ensure more transparency? Yeah, technically speaking, the, the, the U.S. Department of Treasury and the Internal Revenue Service oversee the sort of charitable arm. But the reality is there, as we know, the IRS is badly understaffed 
And they're focusing rightly on how do they raise revenue to pay for public services. And the charity work is sort of secondary. Uh, sometimes state attorney generals can look into some of these self-dealing and abuses. The problem is a lot of these are legal. A lot of these dadges currently are legal. So it's really up to Congress to uh, close down some of these abuses, require transparency, make sure that the money is flowing out of these private foundations and donor advised funds and going to the actual uh, community charities that really need the money right now. Um, so, you know, I think urging our lawmakers to provide better oversight to the charity system generally would be a good thing to do. Chuck Collins with the Institute for Policy Studies. You've given us a lot to digest and think about. Uh, Chuck, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it.